G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as once again I'm here to take you through my round 10 tips. If you haven't checked out already, the other day I uploaded my AFL Power Rankings for the first 9 rounds of the season. So you'll be able to find that video pretty easily, it is the second last video that I've uploaded. Otherwise, I'll just leave a shortcut for you in... Uh, over there, I guess. For now, though, let's roll on to our round 10 tips. First up, we have the Swans and Collingwood at the SCG on Friday night. Now, the Swans are coming off a brilliant victory last week down in Hobart, and it's one that I didn't tip them for. Hobart is a particularly tough hunting ground for away sides, and I don't usually tip against North down there. Hey. The Swans come into this game with a bit of form. They actually, funnily enough, won the last two games by the exact same score. Right. Buddy's a test to come back in, and he gives them a slight chance of pulling off a massive upset. The Pies, on the other hand, have won their last six games, but in the last two weeks have been challenged by two pretty weak sides. My bet is that with this game being in Sydney, that'll probably happen for a third week in a row. With Buddy coming back in this week, even though he's probably going to be underdone if he does come back in, that is an extra defensive headache for them to consider. If Buddy doesn't play, I wouldn't give the Swans two much of a chance to be honest. If he does play, I'm still going to tip the Pies, but it will be a close game. I'm going to tip Collingwood by 17 points. Next up, we have Hawthorne versus Port Adelaide down in Tasmania. This game is a particularly interesting one for me. We're seeing one of the weaker contested ball sides in the competition host one of the better contested ball sides. The Hawks have been typically up and down this season. Last week, they went down to the Tigers in a tough game, and the week before that, they picked apart the Giants. With this game being in Tasmania, despite the Hawks playing down there a fair bit, I wouldn't say they have a true home ground advantage. With this game at the MCG, I'd probably pick Hawthorne on the basis that I could see them picking apart Port Adelaide with their strong ball use. With this game in down in Tasmania, I'm not so confident. The Power have had their win taken out of their sails to some extent with recent injuries, although they did get a pressure relieving victory last week over the Suns. If Port were going into this game at full strength, I'd have them as clear favourites, although it does appear that Gray, Jonas and Lysette are all tests to come back in this week. I'm agonising over this tip. I'm actually going to back in Port and they're going to win this game by four points. The third game of the round is the Doggies hosting North Melbourne at Marvel Stadium. If the Doggies are serious about playing finals, they have to win this game, otherwise their season's just about over. Well, actually, I don't really like saying season over, but their chances of making the finals from there would be dangerously slim. Last week, they did have one of the toughest fixtures in footy, and that's going down to play Geelong at GMHBA. They did push them for most of the day, but the class of the cats shone through, and there wasn't too much they could do about it. I actually think we've seen vast improvement for the Doggies over the course of the year, but in recent weeks, they've had a fairly tough fixture. For North, they missed a massive opportunity to gain some momentum last week, and they'll be rightfully disappointed. They belted Carlton two weeks ago, they pushed Geelong the week after that, and coming up against Sydney down in Tasmania, they really should have won in my opinion. They couldn't get the points despite having over 400 disposals, and it was their inside 50 ball use that really let them down. I think they went at 39%. They're not without their chances this week, but I feel pretty confident in saying the Doggies are going to win this, and they're going to win by 22 points. Next up, we have Adelaide hosting West Coast at Adelaide Oval, and this for me shapes as one of the more interesting games of the round. After a string of wins against some weak or depleted opposition in recent games, the Crows' run came to an end last week with a thrilling loss to the Lions at the Gabba. Now, there's no shame in them losing at the Gabba to the Lions, but they don't want to make it two losses a row against evenly ranked sides. They come up against the Eagles, who similarly have built a little bit of momentum by picking off some weaker sides. To be fair to Melbourne last week, the Eagles were probably outplayed for three quarters by them, but the Eagles absolutely monstered them in the last turn. That last quarter performance by the Eagles saw them kick six goals to one. They showed a tenacity they haven't shown since about round three, so it'll be interesting to see if that's a sign of things to come, or was it a flash in the pan? There's a belief that West Coast are pretty good at Adelaide Oval. I think since we switched to Optus Stadium and the wider ground, we've become a little bit worse at Adelaide Oval. Adelaide Oval's a bit narrower, if I'm not mistaken, so. I don't know if we're actually well suited to it anymore. I'm going to get roasted for this by Eagles fans, but I can't see this being a close game. I'm going to tip Adelaide to win this by 39 points. On Saturday night, we have the Gold Coast Suns playing host to Geelong over in Metricon. Now, this game doesn't really scream blockbuster of the round, but what the Suns have been able to do this year is scrap and scrap and keep themselves in games. The Suns did put up a tough performance last week. They were actually in front of the power at halftime before falling away in wet conditions. It does help for them that Tuke Miller is a test to come back in this week because they'll need every big body they can get. The Cats, on the other hand, are an absolute well-oiled machine this year, and it's hard to see them being challenged in this game. Dangerfield's listed as a test this week. I wouldn't be surprised if they decide to rest him for the trip. I don't think that's going to impact the game. I think it'll just impact everyone's fantasy team. For that reason, I hope he does play. I think the Cats are safe as houses here and they're going to win this game by 44 points. Next up, we have Richmond hosting Essendon in the Dreamtime game at the MCG. The Dreamtime games are usually quite highly anticipated. I guess Richmond's been good for a few years now and Essendon, while they haven't, 
have played a pretty attacking brand of football all the same. The depleted Tigers continue to impress me with their ability to get wins despite missing some key names. We saw, we saw Dusty get off the leash a little bit last week, which is a bit of an ominous sign for the competition. <laughs> the Bombers, on the other hand, snapped a three-game losing streak with a narrow win over the Dockers at Marvel. With Danaher now ruled out for the season, a loss here could really mount the pressure on Essendon and John Worsfold. I do also have to note that the Tigers have actually won the last eight clashes between these sides, which is fairly compelling. I'm going to have to tip the Tigers here by 25 points. Next up is Melbourne hosting the GWS Giants at the MCG. This for me is another really interesting game, not least because Melbourne's probably really scrapping for this season now. The Ds were absolutely gallant last week in defeat against the Eagles, but probably burnt too many petrol tickets and didn't finish off their opportunities they created in the third quarter in particular. They did look powerful and really hard to stop when they moved the ball with pace through the corridor, but obviously just couldn't make the most of their opportunities. They've been underdone all year, that much is clear, but we are starting to see slow improvement. I'm not sure how much you can take out of the Giants game last week. They absolutely obliterated a decimated Carlton side by 93 points. The Giants were good as they have been all year, but the Blues really didn't show up and their backline is pretty undermanned. The Giants, as it's been well documented, have lost 14 of their 16 games at the MCG and it might be bordering on hoodoo territory. They were absolutely picked apart by Hawthorne there a couple of weeks ago, so it'll be interesting to see if they can improve on that performance. As much as I rate the Giants, I'm actually going to have to back in the Ds here to keep their season alive. I'm tipping the Demons by 13 points. The second last game of the round is St Kilda and Carlton at Marvel Stadium. Both of these sides come to this game on a four game losing streak. After a really promising start to the year, the Saints have faced a real reality check in recent weeks and although they were pretty good against the Pies last week, it's evident where they really sit in the competition to me. They go into this game in 13th spot with four wins, five losses and a percentage of 89%. If they lose this game, especially being against Carlton, it'll be really hard to see them mounting any case for finals this year, so it's fair to say this is a huge game for the club. Equally, at Carlton, the pressure's really starting to build on Brendan Bolton, so they'll see this as an opportunity to get the monkey off the back against a team that's not going so well themselves. The last four weeks have been pretty predictable from Carlton, in my view. After a really close deflating loss against the Hawks in Tasmania, I predicted they would be flat the next week and lose to the Roos quite easily. When they pushed the Pies all the way at the MCG a few weeks back as well, I tipped there's a good chance they weren't going to show up in Sydney the following week. You see it time and time again when there's an emotion charged game for a club that the next week they don't back it up. But to be controversial, I'm actually going to tip the Blues this week. I think they match up well against the Saints and they're going to get the job done. I tip Carlton to win this by 11 points. The final game of the round shapes as a potential belter in my opinion and that is Fremantle hosting Brisbane at Optus Stadium on Sunday. The Dockers have been putting up very respectable performances in my opinion but really haven't been good enough to get the points in any of the games. They've been defensively sound, but their inability to generate winning scores continues to plague them. Their mature players are getting it done, and almost none better than David Mundy, and I, if it's possible, I think he's actually having a career best season at the age of like 34. They come up against a Lions side sitting in fourth spot coming off a huge victory against the Crows last week. They'll be coming into this game with a fair bit of confidence, and especially knowing that their only game at Optus Stadium saw them belt the Dockers last year. I'm preparing for a ripper of a game here. I'm genuinely not sure who will win, but I'm going to tip Brisbane to win their second game in a row by one point. Anyway guys, thanks for watching my tips video. If you haven't seen already, I am doing a podcast tonight live streamed on the Sportopia podcast. I'm not sure what time I'll get this video actually up, so there's a chance that I'll already be in the podcast by the time you see this. It'll be live streamed at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, which is 5.30 Perth time. If you can't watch it live, it'll still be available on his channel. And if you're interested in watching me, guys, I'll leave the link in the description to his channel. If you haven't already, make sure you also subscribe to True Footy. Otherwise, I'll see you guys very soon on this channel. Cheers.